Hi, this is Richard on board the International Space Station. <laughs> Hello, Richard Garriott. This is June Scobie Rogers calling from Challenger Center Earth up to International Space Station. You look great. This opportunity. Hey, hey, um, hey, June, so do you, by the way, and I'm feeling great as well. <laughs> this opportunity is following along with NASA's educator astronaut, Barbara Morgan. You are representing our space team, and you have a mighty team of thousands and thousands of students back here on Earth. This is our first international live video conference. I just spoke with students in Glasgow, Scotland, and I gave them an award for the work they were doing in England to bring experiments, to send experiments aboard with you. And today, we have sponsors representing NASA, who's made this all sponsorable, and of course, your Russian space agency, Space Adventures, KS, KZO, NC, Soft, Turk, and Sports and Space folks, Red Knight Learning, and Space Portalization. Uh, quite a group of sponsors who've made this all, brought this together with Challenger Center and made it all possible. Now the star, stars of the team are the students first being represented by Ardmore Elementary in Maryland. Hi, I'm Nicole. Is living in space different from living on Earth? Hey, Nicole. Uh, well, yeah, there's quite a few differences. Uh, you know, you uh, don't sleep in a bed, so to speak. You float around in a sleeping bag. Uh, uh, the uh, Everything you have nearby you, like, for example, here's my nice Challenger Center patch. You can see it all floats around. So, uh, you know, living and working up here is kind of challenging. Go ahead. My name is Tatiana. What are you looking for in space? Hey, Tatiana. Well, I've got a number of experiments. I'm doing some biology experiments like protein crystal growth. Of course, I'm doing a lot of the experiments that you kids have uh, proposed and some of the science challenges that have been proposed. I've been recording a lot of those videos here during my whole flight. And I'm doing a lot of Earth observations. I'm taking pictures of the Earth as I travel around it. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Hannah. Is there another planet on which humans can live? Hey, Hannah, that's a really interesting question. Uh, uh, you know, in our solar system, uh, for humans, this appears, the Earth appears to be the only one that we can live on. But farther, much farther out in space, probably there are other planets that uh, have similar traits to the Earth, but we haven't found any yet. Go ahead. And now, our students from Hunter Woods Elementary, Virginia. Um, when playing your football in space video game, how will you compensate for the player's lack of ability to gain momentum? Ah, that's a very good question. In fact, uh, when I was trying to demonstrate some sports in space here, we were showing that same problem, where uh, uh, since you don't have traction with the ground, with gravity, you have to reach out and actually grab onto or hold onto or push off of the walls or rails or things like that. But once you get going, it's really easy to fly all the way to the space station. Hi, my name is Cassie. My question is, is there any signs of, ma of magnetic field in space? If so, what are those signs? Yeah, hey, Cassie, uh, that's actually one of the most interesting, interesting things I've been able to do up here is I've had a few magnets that uh, you can float in the air and they orient right with the Earth's uh, magnetic field. So just like a compass on the ground, but in space you can uh, uh, float it in front of you and show how the compass, uh, when you're over the North Pole, the North Magnetic Pole, aims down straight at the North Pole. So it's uh, interesting to see a, a compass in three dimensions. Go ahead. My name is Jessica. How long will it take to grow crystals in outer space, and will they be firm or fragile? Hey, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, one of the experiments I'm doing is a crystal experiment. And uh, the protein crystals I'm growing take a long time to grow, and they're very fragile. 
Uh, but there are other kinds of crystals that grow more quickly and are more sturdy. The, the important thing about space crystals is they're very, very pure. And so that's very good for research. Go ahead. Next, our questions will come from Challenger Learning. My name is Sarah, and I am from Indiana. I'm 12 years old, and when your father flew on Skylab in 1973, you were also 12. Did you get to speak with your dad while he was in space? Yeah, hey, uh, good to talk to you. And yes, I did get to speak with my dad in space. We had a telephone in my mother's bedroom uh, that we could use to uh, connect to NASA, to connect to space. Go ahead. How hard is it to eat in space? Yeah, I heard that. That's uh, interesting. Uh, you know, your first time you try to swallow or eat some food, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, but get used to it uh, right away. But the a more interesting thing is when you dig food out of a dish to eat it, making sure you don't fling it across the spaceship onto the far wall. <laughs> My question is, what does the Earth look like in outer space? What does Earth look like from outer space? What does Earth look like? Uh, thanks, June. Uh, yes, and uh, one of the things I've been most struck by is uh, uh, the combination of how high it appears we are. We're maybe 10 to 20 times higher than the cloud, as it looks like. Uh, but also, you seem to be very close. It's actually very surprising that uh, there's no air here to have friction to slow us down. Go ahead. I'm Hannah from Indiana, and do you think Someday we will live in space. Hey, Hannah from Indiana. Uh, yes, I think there's uh, no question that uh, people will one day move into space and uh, live there permanently, or if not in space stations, at least on other planets. But uh, it's only a question of time. Go ahead. Are you ever concerned that space debris is going to hit the International Space Station? Uh, you know, uh, space debris of some kind hits the International Space Station with some regularity. Whenever there's a big piece of debris, they actually move the space station out of the way of that debris. But even on the windows that we use to look out, you can see little uh, nick marks from the small uh, debris we've run into. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Michael. I would like to know if you could make a video game about space. Hey, that's a good question about video games from space. And, uh, you know, as a video game maker, of course, uh, uh, I have a game, Tabby La Rasa, that has space involved in it, but uh, I'm sure this flight will inspire more games. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Natalie. What is it like living in space where it is cold? Hey, Natalie. Yes, uh, on board the station here, though, they've got great uh, management of the temperature, so uh, it's very comfortable on the inside. But if you were outside, for example, the guys that go on spacewalks have to uh, work very hard to make sure that their spacesuit stays you know, neither too hot nor too cold. It's uh, in the sun you get too hot, in the shade you get too cold if you're not careful. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Joya. On Earth, salt crystals are usually formed in a cubic shape. Do you think crystals were formed in that shape in space? Do you think a full crystal will form at all, according to the change in gravity conditions? A good question, Joya. And uh, yes, actually, crystals will grow in generally the same shapes here. And in fact, they uh, will grow with fewer impurities. And so for scientific uh, purposes, uh, it's, uh, this is a very good place to grow crystals. Go ahead. My name is Kirsu, and my question is, can you see the Earth spinning in outer space, or is it too slow? Well, let's see. Since we're traveling at 17,000 miles an hour, uh, it's uh, even though the Earth, of course, is spinning, uh, I think the surface only moves about 700 miles an hour. So uh, what we really perceive is our own movement, not the rotation of the Earth. But when we finish one orbit, the Earth has moved past us by about that, uh, the amount of uh, 90 minutes is uh, an hour and a half's worth of rotation, so we can tell we're over a different spot. 